The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. The 555 timer is a useful, inexpensive IC with a ton of applications. One way to use the 555 timer is in a stable mode as an oscillator. <music> 555 timers have two possible output states, high and low. In a stable mode, the output never stays in either state, but switches or oscillates between the two. To understand how this works, I'll start by reviewing what happens inside a 555 timer. The 555 timer has eight pins. Pins one and eight are used to power the chip. Pin one gets connected to ground, often your black wire, and pin eight gets connected to the supply voltage, VCC, usually the red wire. Pin three is the output. With an LED connected to the output, when output is high, the LED would be on. When the output is low, the LED would be off. Inside the 555, the output pin is tied to the output of a flip-flop. A flip-flop's two inputs are set and reset. The two outputs are Q and not Q. They are inverse of each other. When Q is high, not Q is low. And when Q is low, not Q is high. A high signal at the set input causes Q to output high and not Q low. A high signal at the reset input causes Q to output low and not Q high. In the 555, not Q is used and is connected to the 555 output through an inverter. This means the 555 output signal is basically the same as output Q of the flip-flop, the inverse of not Q. Not Q also connects to the base of a transistor. The transistor connects pin 7 at its collector to ground at its emitter. When the flip-flop is set, not Q outputs low, so the 555 outputs the inverse high. When the flip-flop is reset, not Q outputs high. The 555 output is low, turning off the LED. But the transistor is on, connecting the discharge pin to ground. I'll get into why that's useful in a little bit. Set connects to the output of a comparator that connects to pin two, trigger. Reset connects to the output of another comparator that connects to pin six, threshold. Both comparators connect to a voltage divider that runs between ground and VCC internally. The positive input of comparator one is supplied a voltage of one third VCC. When the voltage at pin 2 is higher than 1 3rd VCC, comparator 1 outputs low. But if the voltage at pin 2 drops below 1 3rd VCC, comparator 1 outputs high, which sets the flip-flop, and the 555 outputs high. The negative input of comparator 2 is supplied 2 thirds VCC from the voltage divider. When the voltage at pin 6 is lower than 2 thirds VCC, comparator 2 outputs low. But when the voltage at pin 6 is higher than 2 thirds VCC, comparator 2 outputs high, resetting the flip-flop, causing the 555 to output low, turning off the LED, but turning on the transistor connected to the discharge pin. So a voltage lower than 1 third VCC at pin 2 sets the 555 output high, and a voltage higher than 2 thirds VCC at pin 6 resets the 555 output low. Now let's talk about how to add external components to build an A-stable circuit. For this circuit, pins 2 and 6 are tied together. This means they will always have the same voltage. A capacitor is added connecting them both to ground. The voltage supplied to pins 2 and 6 is determined by that capacitor's voltage. Both pins are also connected to VCC through a couple resistors. Between the two resistors, a connection to the discharge pin is added. Remember, when pin 2 has a voltage lower than 1 3rd VCC, the output is set high. And when pin 6 has a voltage higher than 2 thirds VCC, the output is reset back to low and the voltage supplied to the pins is set by the capacitor voltage. 
When the circuit is first supplied power, the capacitor is at zero volts. Since that is lower than one third VCC, comparator one outputs high, setting the 555 output high, turning on the LED. The capacitor charges, and when its voltage is above one third VCC, comparator one switches low, but the 555 continues to output high. When the capacitor charges to higher than two thirds VCC, the voltage at pin six causes comparator two to output high, resetting the 555 output low and the LED turns off. This also turns on the transistor of the discharge pin. This resistor prevents the capacitor from connecting to VCC and instead forces it to connect through pin seven to ground and the capacitor begins to drain. Dropping below two thirds VCC, comparator two outputs low. Dropping below one third VCC, the voltage at pin two triggers the output high, turning on the LED again. This cycle of the capacitor charging up to above two thirds VCC, turning the LED off, and draining back down to below one third VCC, turning the LED on, will continue as long as the circuit is supplied power. Here's our A-stable circuit. Pin one is connected to ground, while pin eight is connected to VCC. Pin three, our output, connects to an LED with a resistor. Pins two and six are tied together, while pin two connects to ground with this 100 microfarad capacitor. Pin six connects to VCC with this one kilo ohm resistor. And connecting pins six and seven, I have my resistance substitution box set up so I can easily switch the values. When the power supply is turned on, supplying nine volts, with our 100 microfarad capacitor, the one kilo ohm resistor connecting pin seven to VCC, and a 10 kilo ohm resistor connecting pins six and seven, this is the speed we get. By reducing the value of this resistor, I can make the speed go faster. 6.8 kilo ohms, 4.7 kilo ohms, 3.3 kilo ohms, 2.2 kilo ohms, or one kilo ohm. Creating an A-stable oscillator is probably the most common use for a 555 timer. For example, it can be used to create the clock signal for other ICs. If you're new to 555 timers, tell me how you might be able to use a 555 timer in A-stable mode in a circuit. If 555 timers are old news for you, share about your projects and circuits you've made in the past. Post your ideas, questions, and builds on the Element 14 community. You can find the link to that and more videos on 555 timers in the description below. Happy learning!